Hello, I'm Jesse Lappert, and today we're going to look back at top 20 game shows that were supposed to be hosted by someone else. Now, these were host replacements that came at the last minute. Yeah, before the show made it to the air. Mm -hmm. It could have been because maybe it was a contract or... Maybe they felt like this guy didn't want to, wasn't good for hosting, or you never know. Okay? And there could be one on here that was supposed to be a replacement, and we're going to have him on this list. Oh, let's get this voice going, and let's take a look at our countdown. Number 20. To Tell the Truth, 1990 was supposed to be hosted by Richard Klein, not Gordon Elliott. In 1990, NBC wanted to revive To Tell the Truth. And the host of the pilot was former Three's Company star Richard Klein. But NBC accidentally aired the pilot episode. So fans were hoping that Richard Klein was going to be the regular host, but instead it was Gordon Elliott. Now, Elliott only hosted for eight weeks before being replaced by panelist Lynn Swan, who was later replaced by the legend Alex Trebek. Yeah, on the premiere episode, they accidentally aired the pilot on the East Coast. So people on the East Coast were thinking that Richard Klein was going to be the regular host, but it wasn't. Number 19, The Joker's Wild, was originally supposed to be hosted by Alan Ludden, not Jack Barry. In 1969, Alan Ludden taped a pilot episode for CBS called The Joker's Wild, which was created by the late Jack Barry. But Ludden was already hosting the revival of Password on ABC when The Joker's Wild was set to premiere. And so, Jack Barry returned to television by hosting The Joker's Wild, which turned out to be his much better hosting gig. Number 18, Winning Line was originally supposed to be hosted by Geraldo Rivera, not Dick Clark. In 1999, the million-dollar craze of game shows was just beginning, with Who Wants to Be a Millionaire on ABC. And a couple months later, Fox premiered Greed. But in December of 1999, CBS decided to do a million-dollar game show called Winning Lines, which premiered in January of 2000, and the original choice to host was Geraldo Rivera. But Geraldo, even though he accepted the job, he couldn't agree on the contract, and also he was under contract with CNBC. So he turned it down at the last minute, and also couldn't agree on the contract at the last minute. And so, to find another host, they chose the world's oldest living teenager, he'll always be, the late Dick Clark. Clark only hosted it for nine weeks, and it turned out this was Clark's last CBS game show. Number 17, Card Sharks, 1986, was originally supposed to be hosted by Jim Perry, not Bob Eubanks. In 1985, Mark Goodson wanted to bring Card Sharks back on the air, but this time it would air on CBS. Its original home was NBC in 1978. And Goodson wanted Perry, Jim Perry, the original host, to leave Sale of the Century to host it. And Perry wanted to, but NBC did not want Perry leaving Sale of the Century. And so find another host, he chose Bob Eubanks, who had previously emceed Trivia Trap for Goodson Productions, 
earlier that year when was canceled on ABC in April of 1985. Eubanks was also hosting a revival of the Newlywed Game at the time. And speaking of the Newlywed Game, Eubanks wasn't the original choice to host the original Newlywed Game, and that's up next. Number 16, The Newlywed Game, was originally supposed to be hosted by Scott Beach, not Bob Eubanks. In 1966, Chuck Barris wanted to do a married couple version of the dating game and call it the Newlywed Game. His original choice of host was Scott Beach, who had a very deep voice. But Barris found Beach more as an announcer than host, and so Beach was given the announcing gig, and 28-year-old Bob Eubanks was brought in to host. Now, Eubanks had already been a well-known DJ who had brought the Beatles to perform at the Hollywood Bowl. But as for Scott Beach, he later lent his voice on a couple of Peanuts projects, such as Bon Voyage, Charlie Brown, and Don't Come Back, and She's a Good Skate, Charlie Brown. And you probably remember him as the judge of the divorce court in Mrs. Doubtfire. As for Eubanks, his relationship with the newlywed game goes on and on and on, which he hosted for off and on for more than 40 years. Speaking of Chuck Barris, who created the Newlywed Game, here's something you probably already know, but uh, and this definitely made the countdown. Number 15, The Gong Show, was originally supposed to be hosted by John Barber, not Chuck Barris. In 1976, Chuck Barris wanted to do his own variety game show called The Gong Show. And his original choice of host was John Barber from Canada. But apparently, Barber was thinking he was hosting a school talent show and was protesting acts being gonged. And so NBC decided that Chuck Barris take over as regular host or NBC would not air the gong show. And when Chuck Barris became host, the rest is history. Number 14, Starcade was originally supposed to be hosted by Alex Trebek, not Mark Richards or Jeff Edwards. Long before Nickelodeon had Nick Arcade, there was this video game show called Starcade. And the original choice to host it was Alex Trebek, who had hosted the pilot in 1982. But apparently... Trebek had already signed to host the new Battle Stars on NBC. And so he was replaced by Mark Richards. But Richards left the show after a couple months and was replaced by Jeff Edwards, who hated video games but got used to them as the show went on. Number 13, Show Offs, was originally supposed to be hosted by Larry Blyden, not Bobby Van. In 1975, Mark Goodson created a game show called Show Offs, a charades game show. And the original choice to host was Larry Blyden, who had previously emceed What's My Line in Syndication. And Blyden had taped a pilot and was signed on to host it after he did a great job. But unfortunately, while on vacation in Africa... Blyden was killed in a car accident. And so, a last-minute hosting change had to be announced, and they brought Bobby Van in to host show-offs. May God bless you, Larry Blyden. Number 12, The Price is Right, the current CBS version, was originally supposed to be hosted by Dennis James, not Bob Barker. In 1972, Mark Goodson and Bill Tomman wanted to revive The Price is Right 
and add a little let's make a deal to it. And, well, actually they wanted Bill Cullen to return, but everybody knew that Cullen had polio, which made it impossible for him to do. So they chose Dennis James to be the new host of the CBS game show. But, however, the network wanted Bob Barker to spend more time on CBS because he had already done a few specials for them, such as the Miss USA, the Miss Universe pageants, the Tournament of Roses parade, as well as the Pillsbury Bake Off. So they wanted Bob Barker to be a regular on the network. And so Barker hosted the daytime prices, right, while still doing Truth or Consequences. As for Dennis James, he ended up hosting the nighttime prices, right, which he lasted until 1977, and then Barker took over the nighttime version on first run syndication. Uh, I have to interrupt for a minute. There were actually two um, original choices to replace a host, and we have added them in the countdown. And here's number 11. Number 11. Wheel of Fortune. The original choice to replace Chuck Woolery as host was, believe it or not, Alex Trebek, not Pat Sajak. That's right. In 1981, well, Chuck Woolery left Wheel of Fortune in a contract dispute and left the show. I just said it twice, <laughs> But the original choice was not Pat Sajak to replace. It was Alex Trebek. Trebek was already hosting Battle Stars. This is like what I said earlier in the Starcade thing. Trebek was already hosting Battle Stars. And so they brought in local weatherman Pat Sajak to fill Chuck Woolery's shoes. Well, as for Trebek, he would later go on to host. A 37-year run on Jeopardy, up to his death in 2020. Funny thing is, Trebek would host an episode of Wheel of Fortune filling in for Pat Sajak on April Fool's, 1997. Number 10, Monopoly, was originally supposed to be hosted by Peter Tamarkin, not Mike Riley. In 1989, Merv Griffin wanted to bring the board game Monopoly to television and make it a game show. And his original choice of host was Peter Tamarkin, who we all know as the host of Press Your Luck. Tamarkin was originally supposed to host the show in first-run syndication. However, not enough stations picked up the show. And as a result, it never aired in first-run syndication. However, it would eventually make the air in the summer of 1990 on ABC. And the host was not Tamarkin. It was Mike Riley, who was a contestant on Jeopardy! the year before, and a contestant on the pilot episode of Monopoly, which Tamarkin hosted. Well, after 12 weeks on the air, it's still talked about. Monopoly is still talked about today. Number 9, Super Password, was originally supposed to be hosted by Tom Kennedy, not Burt Convy. In 1984, Mark Goodson wanted to bring Password back or I should say Password Plus back, but change it, the name again to Super Password. And the original plan was to have Tom Kennedy, who had not been seen on television since Password Plus's cancellation, the original choice was to have Kennedy return as host. But however, Kennedy had already signed to host Body Language on CBS. And so another host had to be brought in, it was none other than Burt Convy, whose previous show, Tattletales, was canceled three months earlier. And Convy hosted Super Password for a total of five years. 
It was a great run on NBC. And speaking of Bert Convy, he's in the next one. Number 8. Match Game 1990 was originally supposed to be hosted by Bert Convy, not Ross Schaefer. In 1989, Mark Goodson wanted to bring Match Game back to television and have it air on ABC. And Match Game was one of the few shows to have aired on NBC, CBS, and ABC. But the original choice to host it was Bert Convy, who was a frequent panelist from the original 70s version. Convy had taped it five pilot episodes in November of 1989 and ABC decided to pick up the revival, and Convy was slated to host. However, Convy was diagnosed with brain tumor and was forced out of the project. Convy died in July of 1991. However, the host of the revival of Match Game was Ross Schaefer, who had hosted the Canadian game show Love Me, Love Not, on the USA Network, as well as the Fox late night talk show, The Late Show. And sadly, this version of Match Game would be canceled around the same time of Convy's death. Number seven, The Joker's Wild. Well, here's another one of those uh, replacements, original replacements. The original replacement for Jack Barry was Jim Peck, not Bill Cullen. In early 1984, Jack Barry had decided to retire as host of the Joker's Wild and finish the season, the 1983-84 season. And he originally wanted Jim Peck to replace him. And the original plan was to have Barry appear on the season premiere in 1984 and announce that Peck was going to take over for him. However, sadly, in May of 1984, shortly before the end of the season, Barry died from a heart attack while out jogging in Central Park in New York City. Dan Enright took over the company, the Barry and Enright Productions, and decided not to have Peck become host and chose 64-year-old Bill Cullen to take over for the final two seasons of The Joker's Wild. Number six. Classic Concentration was originally supposed to be hosted by Ray Combs, not Alex Trebek. In 1987, Concentration was coming back to television as Classic Concentration. And believe it or not, one of the hosts that was auditioning for Classic Concentration was Ray Combs. And NBC thought that Combs would make a better host. But however, Mark Goodson felt that Combs would be better off hosting Family Feud on CBS, which premiered a year later. And Combs had already shot the pilot for Family Feud around the same time Classic Concentration premiered on NBC. And so, with Combs out of the hosting gig for Classic Concentration, Goodson brought in, believe it or not, Alex Trebek, who had already hosted Jeopardy for three years. And Trebek hosted the entire run of Classic Concentration from September. Uh, May 1987 to September 1991. Number five. The current run of Family Feud. The original choice to host was Dolly Parton, not Louie Anderson. In 1999, Family Feud was coming back to television after being off the air for four years. The original plan was to have Dolly Parton, a well-known country-western singer, to be the host. But however, the production crew couldn't reach a deal with Parton. And so they brought in Louie Anderson 
from Life with Louie to become the host, which he hosted until 2002 before being replaced by Richard Karn, which he hosted until 2006 and then was replaced by John O'Hurley until 2010 and then from 2010 present, it's been always Steve Harvey. Number four, Family Feud, the CBS version, was originally supposed to be hosted by Joe Namath, not Ray Combs. That's right. In 1987, Mark Goodson wanted to bring Family Feud back on television, but this time have it air on the CBS network, not ABC. But the network originally wanted Joe Namath to host it. As you probably know, Joe Namath, well-known football player, former football player for the New York Jets. And Namath was already a big name. Oh, that was a mouthful. However, Goodson could not see Namath as a game show host. And so, so Goodson sent Namath away. And the perfect host, believe it or not, was Ray Combs, who was originally supposed to host Classic Concentration, as mentioned before, but Alex Trebek took the hosting reins of Classic Concentration. And so Combs taped a successful pilot, and then Goodson said that Combs was his perfect choice. Combs hosted Family Feud on CBS until 1993 and the syndicated run from 88 until 1994. The CBS version also premiered in 1988. Number three, Family Feud. The original version on ABC was originally supposed to be hosted by William Shatner, not Richard Dawson. In 1975, Mark Goodson wanted to do a game show which was a spin-off of Match Game called Family Feud. Now, believe it or not, it was originally supposed to air on CBS and was taped at CBS. The pilot episode was taped at CBS, I should say. But however, ABC decided to pick up the show. And Goodson's original choice to host it was William Shatner. Now, Goodson said that Shatner would have made it as a good host, but Shatner decided to leave the project and resume his acting career. And so, Goodson brought in match game panelist Richard Dawson. Now, Dawson was already still being a match game panelist and hosting Family Feud at the same time, which he did for two years. As for Richard Dawson hosting Family Feud, he could, he always gave out good kisses. And as for William Shatner, he, well, later became T.J. Hooker and hosting shows dealing with 911 calls. <laughs> Number two, Greed was originally supposed to be hosted by Phil Donahue, not Chuck Woolery. As mentioned earlier, the Million Dollar Craze was happening in game show history in late 1999. And Fox wanted to do their version of Millionaire and call it Greed. And his, the original choice to host it was Phil Donahue. However, Donahue did not want Fox's paycheck. And so Donahue turned down the offer. And they went with Chuck Woolery, whose previous show, The Dating Game, was on a lot of Fox affiliates. And so Chuck hosted Greed from one year, 1999 and 2000. Number one. Third Degree was originally supposed to be hosted by Peter Marshall, not Burt Convey. Yep, this would probably make it to number one. In 1988, Burt Convey and Burt Reynolds 
wanted to create another game show with the success of Win, Lose, or Draw and call it Third Degree. And Bert Convy hired Peter Marshall to host the pilot episode. And after Marshall did a successful job, Convy decided to have Marshall become the regular host when it made to air. And when the show was picked up, Marshall had to do some guest appearances promoting the show, like he did on Couch Potatoes. However, in summer of 1989, Convy decided to leave the nighttime win, lose, or draw, and he decided to slip himself into the role he hired Marshall for. This made Marshall so angry, he filed a lawsuit on Bert Convy, which Marshall later dropped because Convy was diagnosed with a brain tumor, which ended his life in July of 1991. Well, that was my countdown of the 20 game shows that were supposed to be hosted by someone else. Thank you for watching.